Are you guys ready to learn VLOOKUP in detail? So why are you are waiting? Here I came up with another lesson of VLOOKUP that is lesson number 3. I have already published two lessons earlier and if you haven't watched it, I recommended you to go and check it out the link in the description. I have created a separate playlist for VLOOKUP and just check it out these two videos, right? You have to watch these lessons sequentially then only you will get what I am teaching you guys. If you are directly jumping into the lesson number three, you will not get what I'm going to teach in this lesson. So if you want to become a master in VLOOKUP, you have to watch a sequential. And that's why I'm telling you, just go and check it out link in the description and you will get the sequential lesson too. Also, I have provided the practice file. So check it out in the description too. So now we are talking about the lesson number three. Now let's talk about this. So in this lesson, I'm going to tell you use of if error inside VLOOKUP formula. But why we need to use if error formula? Because whenever we are entering any wrong value inside the lookup value, then you will get an error. So that time I don't want this error should be displayed over there. I want some other value should be displayed over there. And that's why I'm going to use an if error formula. So I'm going to tell you practically how to use it Let's go ahead and jump into our Excel file and let's see the practically. But before moving ahead, I would like to request you guys because you guys are forget. If you like this video, just hit the like button and also consider the subscribe and hit the bell icon to get the next video notification. And also write the comment if you like this video. Really, I would like to read your comments. So please drop a comment in a comment box. I'm going to read it means whatever you want to say in a comment box. If you have any suggestion, you can put down a comment or if you want to learn something new about uh, VLOOKUP formula, just mention inside the comment box. I will read that comment and I'll take it as a suggestion. So now I don't want to waste your time. Let's go ahead on a screen and see how we are going to use VLOOKUP practically. Let's go ahead. Friends, look over my Excel file closely. Here I have an employee data including salary column. I want to use this data so that when I enter an employee ID over here, suppose take an example, I'm going to enter an employee ID over here, 1001. I should get the relevant information of that employee ID. This information should be include the employee's name, age, gender, position and salary. To achieve this, I will demonstrate how to use VLOOKUP formula first. I will apply VLOOKUP formula and then I will explain how to use if error function with VLOOKUP and why it is useful. So let's begin by typing the VLOOKUP formula. I'll type is equal to then type VL and then press the tab key on keyboard. Once I press the tab key, I will get the VLOOKUP formula syntax over here. There are four arguments that I already told you in a previous video. First, it is lookup value. So I'm going to select a lookup value. Once you select the lookup value, you need to press F4 to fix this value. Why should we fix this value? Because we are having lookup value only in a J1 cell. It is not a dynamic value. It should be a fix because once you drag your formula, J1 should not be J2. It should not be relative one. So that's why I have fixed it. Now I'll put down a comma to jump on a next argument and next argument is table array and our table array is located into A to F column. So I'm going to select this in this way. Now you can see the range A to F is selected. Of course, we are having data up to 18 rows. Instead of selecting A to F column, we can select only the range where we are having only data. So, and I already told you how to select that in a previous example. You can select from A1 to F18 too. But for this example, I'm selecting A to F range. Now, put down a comma over here. So once you add a comma over there, you can see next argument is highlighted that is column index number. And what is column index number and how to get it? I already told you in a previous lesson, if you haven't watched it, lesson number one, just go and watch the lesson number one and two, then jump on to this lesson. Then only you will come to know what is column index number and how to apply it. For this example, we have to add a dynamic column index number. If you write directly two over here, it is not going to be a work for you because you have to edit the formula every time. For age, we are not having the same column index number. Age, we are having three, gender for four, position is for five and salary because we are going to pick column index number from our table array. And here it is, employee ID is located in a first column. That's why the column index number for employee ID is one. Then name is located into the second column. So column index number will be two then column index number will be three for age four for gender then five for position and six for salary so for this particular formula we are looking to find out the name from this table so the column index number will be two instead of typing two over here we can make it dynamic by using row function so 
I'm going to put a row function over here and after putting a row function we don't need to do any kind of logic over here just select the row and you can see over there it shows two and we need a two over here as a column index number for now and for this example I told you already we don't need to subtract any numbers from the row we don't need to make it any trick over here because in uh, lesson number one I told you if you are typing this formula in row number 18 then we should subtract some value from the row function then only you will get the proper result but we don't need to do these things over here because we have already in a second row so that's why row will show the exact value that we are looking for right that is the column index number we are looking for row and row is showing two so for now i'm going to keep it as a row and then i'll put a comma over here and after putting comma i'll jump to the next argument and next argument there are two options again you know that there is approximate match and exact match and what is the difference between approximate match and exact match if you really want to know just watch lesson number two but for this example i'm going to put a zero to uh, get it exact value so close the bracket and press the enter key on keyboard and drag the formula down to get the rest of the values answer and you are getting correct answer so for now we are getting correct answer but however note that in our data we have only 17 employees look at here we are having only 17 employees and our last employee is 1017 so if i am going to enter over here 1017 i will get the proper information but if i'm entering over here 1018 what i'll get i'll get an error because we are having only uh, details from 1001 to 1017 employees in our table array we are not having information related to 1018 that's why it shows an error message it indicates the value is not available in your table array when the value is not available we don't want to show an error instead it should display message that is easy to understand like this value is not available to accomplish this you can use the if error function with vlookup this allows us to show a custom message instead of an error when the value is not found so let's go ahead and jump into it to do this we need to edit this formula for that i'm going to double click on this cell and i'm going to edit this formula i'm going to keep my cursor after equal to sign and before vlookup text okay and here it is i'm going to type e p e once you type e p just press the tab key you will get if error complete formula and once you add the if error formula here in this cell you will see the arguments of that if error formula there are two arguments one it is value and another it is value if error in place of first argument we are going to put our entire vlookup formula and we have already vlookup formula in our first position now on a second position i'm going to add a comma here over here to jump to the next argument and for second argument type the message you want to display if there is an error for example, I'm going to type a message over here by putting double quote means double inverted comma. I have added double inverted comma and I'm going to type employee ID is not available. So once you add employee ID is not available and then close the bracket and press the enter key and you will able to see employee ID is not available instead of error. Now drag this formula for rest of the cells and you will able to see the message properly. Now if you type 1001 over here you will get the relevant information and if you type any number which is not available in our table array then what you will see you will see employee ID is not available. It means that if you enter an ID that does not exist it will display employee not available instead of an error. So in this way, you can customize the error message as needed. This is how you use the if error function with VLOOKUP to handle errors and display user friendly messages. If you found this video useful, please like and share it with your friends. Leave a comment to let me know if this VLOOKUP series is beneficial to you. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing to get notifications for upcoming videos. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.